And Ali, if, uh, if you could just yeah. explain to us your story, explain to us how you came from being in that way during the rise to being on the stage today. Well, uh, it's, it's started in 1998 when I created the Bahrain online platform. And, uh, an online platform provide uh, uh, provide the uh, uh, users to, to have a place to express themselves. At that time, we don't have the press, we don't have parliament, uh, uh, we don't have anything for the state security law, which is ruling the whole country. And it was dangerous because they can arrest you for two years without any charge or interrogation. So at that time, when I created, I has I have two points in my mind. It's to allow the people to think about their future, how to think about the, the shape of the reform they want. I think I still in 2005 uh, under the allegation of uh, insulting the king or broadcasting uh, false news, which is the normal charge you, uh, you find in the other countries. <coughs> but they leave me under the, because of the international NGO pressure. And I continue to work in, in that field, which is supporting the freedom uh, of expression and uh, uh, providing uh, the youth they was to be here in Iran. In 2010, I've been um, arrested again and subjected to torture. Uh, they beat me with my family. Uh, and they charged me that I was part of a group whom I didn't need, uh, trying to overthrow the regime, which is the, again, the same charge you will find it in the Arab countries. Uh, during, uh, I've been isolated for two months and I'm in, uh, in the jail. I, I didn't meet my lawyer. Uh, all of my rights been not being respected by the court. We, we document our uh, torture, our, uh, the, the violation of our rights. We document it in the court, but no proper investigation being taken place. Uh, but then when the Arab uh, Spring started uh, and the people was inspired, I mean the people of Bahrain was inspired by the movement of Egypt, Tunisia, uh, there was a crowd of massive protest in the street and so the government released us trying to figure out how to solve the issue but then within less than three weeks um, my house was raided again, thanks God I wasn't there so I've been forced to go into hiding for two years. So that, uh, at that point, I just had a finger. I didn't live with them. They didn't see me. They didn't. I, I didn't see them walking or drinking or even start talking, saying Baba. I've been in that situation for two years. It was dangerous to communicate with my family because I've been sentenced to 15 years by the Minsi court, Minsi court or military court, sorry. Uh, and at that time, there was around four people died under custody because of the, of the situation. Uh, uh, after two years, I managed to get out of the country. And again, I started to continue my work to support the, the people of the How did they use technology to track you or, or, or what's in your mind? Well, <coughs> It's funny because Bahrain is buying, for example, they, they used to use the artificial surveillance uh, tool, which is produced by Ghana. Uh, uh, they will send you a file that uh, it will install without giving you a profile inside your device, either it's laptop or phone. Uh, and it will uh, have all the data that you are browsing, you are typing, you are seeing on their uh, servers and they can attack you or spy on you by, by using this story. Uh, I'll maybe it's good to mention this story. During my hiding, I was using the internet. I have to think so much, so differently that uh, the government cannot attack me. So the steps that I used to when I want to get into my private data or emails, First of all, it should be at any time. Then I have to change the MAC address of, of my <coughs> laptop because my old MAC could be registered with my old Wi-Fi in my plan. Then I have to turn on the Wi-Fi. Then I have to run at the hotspot, which is a free VPN on the internet. 
it's used in Bahrain water or north side or a blocked side. And usually at midnight people will be, will see that. So the pocket will when it's come at that time it will be normal in the <laughs> and then I had to run another beeping, pay beeping, which my friends managed to give it to me. And then I had to run tour. And then uh, use uh, any other like Jitsi or Skype at that time to communicate with others. So I had to go through all these steps every day, every night, just to, uh, to be that I'm still alive and, and I'm still active. It's not that I'm idle or died or forty dead. I mean, I, I think that uh, you're you're the gold standard of, of, of security. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of the, the the human rights defenders that we support are not thinking about. They're going into to their you know what they are doing based on uh, a frustration over what is happening in their their local community. Whether you know whether again it's getting back to extractive industry or all these different things that we were talking about, they're not really thinking a whole lot about digital security. And so what we're finding is a lot of people are, are running into these challenges as they go. They're, they're suddenly realizing, wait a minute, I've got to, I've got to be careful about how I'm storing the content that I'm, I'm monitoring, how I'm sharing that information. So what Frontline is doing is, is we're providing pretty basic stuff about how to, how to anticipate the challenges you're going to face. So, what are the nature of the physical challenges? What is, what is the setup of your office? Can somebody get at your computer? Can somebody get at your hard drive and take that information physically? Can they come in and they digitally remotely surveil what your situation is? So what do you have in place to make sure that as, you, as you're communicating, you're not you know, running into to, you know, having, having all of your information uh, accessed in that way? And we're walking through this process, what we do is we provide training all over the world. We'll, we'll get together for about three days and provide, walk people through the challenges they're facing. They're able to share some of the challenges that they're facing uniquely. And then collectively, they're coming up with a security strategy that fits their particular need. Or more recently, we've added digital security consultants, which will go in and they'll do an audit of your organization and their, your security setup and try to point out the holes as much as feasibly possible. And then in doing that, try to patch those so that you can continue to go about your work. Um, all of this is based on what Frontline has been doing for many years. It's uh, called Security in a Box. And Security in a Box is a collection of open source uh, tools and tactics that are for human rights defenders. And, and we're using open source for, for two reasons. One is because it's, it's open source and it's clear uh, what is in there. The second one is that it's free. I think I stayed in before that, in August 2010, I was here in Dublin with the front line, and they sent me either physical or digital to use these uh, tools. So I gained the need to protect myself during these two years in hiding because I've been learning this digital security. Uh, back to your question about uh, how social media can interact with all of I'll just mention our story, which is Bahrain's story. It's being ignored from all the international media. Especially at the time in the Saudi army in Yemen. So, how we continue to, uh, to document our uh, story or even the human rights violation, how we continue to document it, it's all uh, by the social media. Interesting, all the Snowden revelations and everything I find to be, you know, it's, it's generated a massive amount of debate, and everybody here is thinking about this. But in terms of the human rights defenders we're supporting, these guys are right on the front line dealing with in very real time the ramifications of people that they don't want to be surveilling uh, what they're doing, coming in and impacting their lives in, in very you know, fundamental ways. And we're dealing with that situation you know, all over the world. And, it, and it, it just, it, if anything, the momentum in that is getting bigger and bigger and, and faster and faster. So it's, it's a big issue. One last thing to say is that, that Frontline is here. Uh, we do a lot of work of, of a, a whole variety of different types of support for human rights activists. And a big part of that support is digital security, and that is precisely why we are at the summit. And I would, there's a lot of people here. I would welcome any opportunity to speak with, with any of you about the work that we're doing. And one of the things we're looking at doing is building financial support for our efforts to support human rights defenders through grants, through training, through digital security consultants. And if anybody here is, is, has any interest in this work or knows anybody that is, I would welcome the opportunity to talk to you.
Help protect human rights defenders on the front line. Contribute at www.frontlinedefenders.org slash donate. Thank you.